Hello and welcome to the show. Now, over the years and months, I've done many Survive the Hunt, and there have been many suggestions as to how I could go about various things. Now, there are some that are very interesting and some that we end up trying. There are some that are quite common. However, there are very good reasons as to why they do not get done. So today, for a kind of special video, I was going to take a look at some of the more popular ideas and show and explain why it is that they don't get used all that often. First of all, let's start with, I'd say a fairly big one, trucks or certainly heavyweight vehicles in this particular instance it was a truck that i found now the theory goes if i was to use a truck would it ever be searched would they ever expect would the hunters ever expect me to be driving a truck the answer probably not no although i had hoped the truck might stop before it ran me over uh, <laughs> that is that, that that wasn't ideal um but yeah the theory is they're not going to be looking for me in a truck because i'm unlikely to use one because they never have done before also i'm quite high up it's quite difficult to see and so on there are various downsides though to a truck if you do get seen you can never get away the truck will never be fast enough to to get away. You are limited by where you can go in the city because trucks only spawn in a certain part. Or, you know, they only head around certain parts of the city, so it does limit your play area a little bit. It does also kind of depend on what spawn set as well. Sometimes you can't find particularly good. This is probably, if, of all the big heavyweight vehicles, this is by far and away the best one to go to or to go for. Uh, so yeah, start. Actually, everything went fairly well to plan. Now, we were hanging around the docks area on this, on this particular one. This is where I was going to have to go. Now, I started heading down here, realised, you know what, I'm going to have to turn around, there's not going to be anything down here, there's not going to be, like, the actual, the rest of the game mode was still the same, I was still trying to blow up pre's and so on. Uh, now, pay attention uh, to <laughs> the truck coming out of this area. So, the truck leaving this particular area took a certain line. I'll be honest, my turning into here was all manners of wobbly and wonky. However, when I went to leave the area, I actually followed pretty much the same line that the truck that, that preceded me did. It's, it's, it's sort of cut the corner in the same way. Uh, the thing is, uh, I got spotted in this one. Now, I got spotted by... I happened to be a hunter, actually, was up on the bridge. You can't quite see it, but it was up on the, up on the bridge, on, on the overpass bit. I got out of their car and they saw a truck, what they thought was acting funky. And this is the problem, is that it doesn't matter where you get seen, how you get seen. If you do get seen... They're going to check that vehicle, and there is nothing that you can do about it, as you're about to see. Yeah, we're going to have to see. Uh, annoyingly, let's say annoyingly, there is a... There is a car that's kind of chasing... I was heading back to go and blow up the uh, pre... There is a car that's being very annoying. I... Well, no, as I say, there wasn't any damage on the front of my vehicle. So I don't know what it's doing. What is that ruiner doing? I think I might be in trouble. <laughs> I don't quite know why. I don't quite know what bit. It might, to be fair, it could have been an aircraft that I just didn't see. Um, now... They are going to have to try and stop a truck, which is, let's face it, not necessarily the easiest of tasks. I missed the pre. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Frosty Goldcar did not want to get involved in that. Uh, see, this is the difficulty they have. How on earth do you stop a truck? It is big, it is heavy. I think must I think an aircraft may have seen us turning around or doing something. I'm gonna believe I'm gonna think that might have been what happened. But yeah, how do you stop a car? How do you stop a truck? Well, you can try and pit maneuver it, but that's gonna be really difficult uh, to do all that much with, because well it's so much heavier than you. Um, you can try and pin it somewhere. I mean, this truck is not slow. I will give it credit for that. <laughs> I'm actually impressed. It, it is a bit a bit swift. Now, the fire truck is probably a bigger scare for me. Uh, that is quite fast, also quite heavy. Uh, you see, you know, oh, blimp has turned up. Blimp has turned up. I mean, we can all... Oh. Well, that's a thing that happened. Yes, apparently hitting that stopped me instantly. <laughs> that's that's definitely not how that's supposed to work, really, is it? Uh, <laughs> physics? We outmaneuvered the fire truck, thanks to it. I mean, it was a useful physics moment. Um, right. 
Here we go. The problem is, of course, as well, that, uh, yeah, we can't... Um, we can't outrun them, and they will just keep bringing more and more cars into the chase. Uh, oh, go away. Oh, what are you doing, red car? Why did you... you pulled out, stopped, and then decided to go at the last second. Uh, <laughs> sure. The other thing that they could potentially do as well that is of little... that is of concern to me... Well, that is part of the problem there. Um, is they could start bringing enough vehicles in. They got a tyre. I don't know which tyre. Uh, one of the front ones. Yeah, okay, we're in trouble now. Uh, there goes a tyre. It's still uh, It's going to be easier now to hit... Oh, they've got both rear sides on the left. It's going to be easier to spin me. It's still not going to be... still not going to be easy uh, here. There's a police car. Oh, they're pushing us along. Yeah, should they have enough cars? I can't fight back against sort of one or two. Oh, we got die-bombed by a blimp. We're going to maybe roll the frosty gold machine. I've just lost all sorts of steering going on there. Um, uh, <laughs> Christ. Well, there's someone down and that's it. That is the problem. Yeah, it's just too many cars. A truck cannot stand up to that. I was trying to get to the ocean, but it was just too far away. I guess maybe if I went down towards the docks, but I wasn't to know at that point. Well, here we go. Turns out, the truck is basically as dangerous as expected. Kind of didn't really work. Now, special bonus points do go to Stinty for managing to kill me in this one. So, since he was further back, there's all manner of chaos going on. They do eventually manage to spin my truck into a wall. And as they're trying to pin the vehicle, like, the truck can get going again, but it's slow. Stinty gets out to have a shot. And uh, please note, as the shots come in, uh, Stinty kills me while being knocked over by a blimp. That's some special bonus points for style. I, you know, bonus points for style on that one. It's quite quite an impressive kill uh, <laughs> I have to say right up next so this is another fairly common one as everything blows up as we leave of course it does the blip I think the blip got sticky bombed I think the blip might have had about seven sticky bombs on it by the time I left anyway a uh, fairly common suggestion is why do I not go on foot now there have been times there are instances where I have been on foot and often one of the cited reasons if you like is the player animation this is a very very good point the animation of a player character is different to that of a random AI person now this does rely on them like the hunters actually being able to see you and yes if they're whizzing past they might not notice but there could be something you know there could be the way you walk the way you run and so on is different to the general general AI, there is a bigger problem. There's a much, much bigger problem with this one. So, start this hunt, drove off into the city, and I abandoned the car and got out to walk around. The single biggest problem with this, once you are out on foot, you can't cross the road. You see, the AI pedestrians, I don't know what they do in single player, I can't say I've ever paid that much attention, but certainly in online... The AI pedestrians, unless something has gone on like an explosion and they're running everywhere, the AI pedestrians never cross the road, which means from where you have got out of the car, you are stuck. You are stuck either walking in a square, or whatever shape the block might be of the particular area, or down, like, sort of up and down a, a particular route. Even if you get on the, I don't know, whatever footpath might be the, the longest in the game, you are literally, you can't leave that area because you can't blend in with any pedestrians uh you there's nothing you can do they, they literally will not cross the road now okay sure there is a chance you could pick a moment to try and run across the road and hope you don't get seen and i will be honest in this particular uh, attempt i had not parked my car particularly far away from where i was then walking around so they spotted the car and well they knew i was in that area at some point although let's face it they they, they didn't know what i was doing here the hunters don't know uh, what I was doing here to them, it was just a normal game of Survive the Hunt. Um, so, uh, there were perhaps a few more cars in this area kind of early on, but yeah, there's just nothing that you can do. And I'm looking around and I'm trying to st <laughs> trying to figure out if it's clear to cross the road or not. And it's often damn near impossible to know. I mean, there you go, there's a, there's a hunter car that was searching around at this particular point of the map. You know, had I decided to cross the road then, I would have been in trouble. There's a couple of other cars uh, around and about. And of course, you're not covering very much ground when you're on foot. 
let's face it, when you're driving normally, you're not covering all that much ground. You stopped at a lot of sets of traffic lights here and there. But like this, for example, you can spend a couple of minutes and you don't really move from that same same particular spot. Uh, now, the one AI was freaked out and was running around at the moment the ruiner had got fairly close to them so they were <laughs> they were just kind of sprinting around as you do and i i knew i had to try and cross the road i knew i had to try and and, and get moved at at some point uh, but it's very it's very difficult to know um i actually thought the ai had crossed the road at one stage ahead of me but yeah it's just that you pick a moment to go across and it wasn't really the best of moments to, to go across there were cars around and yeah someone saw me move across the road the uh, <laughs> the hunters were around here I think they just rammed to check something and as they were investigating as they were looking around they got suspicious of 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 me and then once that does happen you are kind of in a lot of bother and you know, there's going to be a shootout at the end of the day. I knew this was likely to be a dangerous bit. As soon as, as, soon as there's an opportunity, I get a gun out, have a little bit, I have a little bit go, go for a shootout. Now, I was hoping that I could go up that uh, staircase to get onto the roof. The thing is, though, once you're exposed, not only was my camera trying to drag me the wrong way, which kind of didn't particularly help, we ended up getting gunned down. Uh, yes, I do have firepower advantage over the hunters, but they have simple numbers. And the difficulty, the difficulty as ever with being on foot is you're going to be stuck in the same place for a really long time. It's going to be really, really boring, uh, simply because you can't cross the road. As a backup emergency plan, it might be something that can be done, but it, it really is a like, full-on last resort. Nothing else possible <laughs> is going to happen, or maybe you need to kind of run away, try and jump over some, I don't know, some hedges or fences or something. But yeah, it's uh, not, not really not really the way to go much too difficult to to blend in or much too difficult to do anything really so up next this is another fairly common suggestion and this is what if i was to not change car what if i was to run try and run for the entire thing with the starting car now i could have been meaner with this one i could have gone with a formula one car I could have gone with, I mean, like the Thrax we had at the start. Or I could have gone with a real high-end supercar. Admittedly, the Vacca that I'm using here is not crazy, crazy fast. It's not that much faster than the likes of the Sultans that the Hunters can use. But I do still have a fairly hefty car advantage in this. Of course, there's no blending in now. Okay, sure. That's part of the, I say part of the charm. I think I'd say that's part of the fun when it comes to survive the hunt is the sneaking is the blending in and and all of that uh, but as an experiment i was gonna go see what happened because as i said a few times before with this i don't think you can run the <laughs> the entire time simply because you're going to make a mistake now we've had some very very long chases in survive the Hunt. i'd like to think i'm not a terrible driver when it comes to trying to get away in this but you really cannot afford to make mistakes and one of the biggest problems that you'll come across with being stuck in the same car is the cars take damage uh, especially now i didn't necessarily contemplate this when i picked my vehicle but the vaca is one of the early game cars now a lot of the early game cars in gta 5 have more extensive damage than the later game ones as in suspension bits get broken the handling actually gets very very iffy on them now i was looking around for a pre as i thought there was one around this area at the point where they found me of course there's no blending in here they see the vaca still running around they know something's up they're going to they're going to give chase i mean it's a matte black car sure if it was the dead of night i might be able to do a little bit of sneaking um in all of this but it was basically just going to be a flat out jaunt around the city now of course the plus point here is i'm going to be flat out in a fast car and they are going to be I say struggling a little bit. There's no sitting around waiting. They don't have chance to call cars immediately over to where I am. They don't have that that opportunity to gather all vehicles around me before a chase starts. So I can kind of pull this gap. I also can absolutely murder a bike. But it's things like that. I don't actually know if it might, might have been one of the hunters. I'm not 100% sure on that. But because uh, one well, hunters did end up on a bike on this one. and they, Whatever. Uh, <laughs> they shouldn't be, but they were. Um... I, lost my, I completely lost my train of thought as he splattered the bike. But, uh, yeah, we can kind of keep this gap because... Or for a while, we can keep this gap because they can't like, swarm for the start. However, silly things happen. The bike 
for example. Something like that I have no control over. I, I have no control over. I can't avoid that. There's nothing I can I say nothing I can do about that one. Not when I'm trying to flee from whatever's giving chase. So we ended up on these kind of chases where there was one or two cars behind me for a while. Uh, there, were, the, the difficult bit, of course, as ever, is shaking the aircraft. We had a blimp and we had a seaplane was up in the air, I believe, on this one. I mean, again, this is where things went a little bit wrong for me. I actually misjudged where the AI cars were going to be. There's a tiny bit of lag involved. I spun the car off a rock. and It's just all of these little things. It's all of these little things that when, when it happens with five minutes to go, well, you know, you can squeak through it, perhaps. When it's happening within the first five minutes, first ten minutes, or whatever, of this, you can see the damage on my car is now starting to show as well. Every little mistake is an opportunity for the hunters. Every little slip-up is an opportunity for the hunters to try and kill you. I'd actually got a really good gap down here, but I was struggling to lose the seaplane. The aircraft have always been one of the more difficult parts in this one. The trying to shake the aircraft. I mean, this... This car, in some ways, I have maybe a little bit of a better chance of trying to find a way to shake the aircraft. I've got a bit more speed, uh, so we might be able to cause it grief. I mean, with the gap I had back, I was now trying to go for just undercover. The problem is there's not enough areas that I can hide in that the plane can't see me. They can have a fairly good guess as to where I've, where I've gone in all of this. Um, is, is always the difficult part. Now, if the plane makes a mistake, fantastic. Then you can slip away, then you can sneak away. Uh, it starts raining, which doesn't really help, but unfortunately the plane didn't. And of course the blimp has now got into this. While I'm busy farting around through the car parks, the blimp that was a fair way back in the chase has got over to where I was last seen, and that's very good at scouting, that's very good at looking around and seeing what's going on. And I just couldn't, I couldn't shake them. I could stay ahead of them for a while, uh, but, you know, I could, I could, put, I could put, up a good, put up a good fight. They, for, for quite a while in this chase, they couldn't really do all that much to stop me. as They were kind of all stuck a little bit further back, and every so often I'd run along, stop to put a sticky bomb on a pre. Uh, if I found one, if there was an, the opportunity arose, and then run off again. So you can see they weren't, they said they weren't directly behind me, but they were close enough to follow. And eventually you're going to make a mistake. And this is the one that got me in trouble uh, in the end. I actually just bounced the car ever so slightly, a little too much speed. Uh, bounced the car and couldn't get it turned in time. It got me stopped in a very narrow area, and then we started getting battered by everything. Uh, what ultimately well, so what ultimately brings about the beginning of the end for this car, I mean, the rear left wheel. Now, the rear left wheel is not in a happy place, and that had a effect, shall we say, on the handling of the vehicle. It just wasn't as nice to drive anymore. It was more difficult. It's still got that good amount of speed, it can still punch away from the cars when, I say when, think when, <laughs> when, when given an opportunity, especially with everyone kind of like crowding around that uh, sort of little plaza area, however, it's, it wasn't losing them. The plane was still set up in the air. The Dodo is actually incredibly loud, as well. I think it's Dodo, isn't it? The seaplane thing. It's incredibly loud. It's uh, <laughs> one of the loudest aircraft in the game. It's terrifying, just hearing that constant droning. Uh, going on uh, above you, but so we're back to another part of the city. Like, how do I lose the plane around around this particular? How do I lose a plane around this area, not crash my car, and not get caught by the other cars? I can do stuff to lose a plane, but I can't do the stuff while the other cars are still kind of close behind. And I, I, just, I kept running. We, we kept running. I kept going to every part of the map. I was trying to blow up as many pre's as I could along the way. In the end, I think I got five pre's in this particular one. So we did get a lot of pre's, and that was mostly just because I could cover a lot of distance. But again, I had to try and get that one. We get a pit maneuver in this. Again, it's another clonk. And this is another case of I'm lucky to get away from things. Uh, there were three of them around this particular point. There was still an aircraft up in the sky. Uh, kind of keeping watch on everything. But that could have also been the demise of my car had they managed to pin it in uh, slightly better. It's all of these constant little moments, all of these constant little things that could well be the end of your particular say, particular car, the end, the, end, the end of the run, and because you're in a chase the entire time, you're just going to make more mistakes. You've got to have an incredible amount of luck uh, to get away with. I think even with a faster car, even if we had the likes of the Thrax, uh, a Formula 1 car... Mm. Formula 1 car is very quick, although it doesn't have very much top speed, which could give it some some issues. I think you'll end up start breaking the Formula 1 car. If you take the wing off the Formula 1 car, it's nigh on undrivable, which isn't good. So, you probably don't want that. Yeah, use a supercar, like a, a, one of the fastest supercars in the game or something, and you'll make life tougher for them, but ultimately you're probably going to slip up somewhere. You're probably going to make that mistake somewhere, and... 
planes are still bloody good. The planes, the blimp are still good. I mean, down here, we're, we can pull away from the blimp just sitting on the motorway uh, down here, but the planes or the helicopters aren't, I say, aren't slow enough uh, to to really be shaken in that in that manner. So we go back off into the city to try and find somewhere that might be able to to work. Uh, now I had, met, again, it was another case of I'd thinned out the numbers of cars that were following me, uh, so we were trying to do something clever, and trying to do something clever was ultimately what would get the better of me. You see, I noticed that there wasn't all that many vehicles around me, there wasn't all that many, but there was still the aircraft, so I'd hatched a little plan to see if this could work. We dove into a car park, the idea being, sort of grab the handbrake, spin it around, hope the cars might shoot past and I could shoot out the way we came in and confuse the plane. Unfortunately, the ruiner was actually really well positioned to block me doing that. They weren't to know that that was my plan, it just so happened to be the case, and that's the downside. One slip-up will probably be your demise. You may get lucky for you a few of them, but all it takes is one to be the thing that kills you, and that'll be game over, and you're just asking for a constant chase in that. You're asking for a constant chase and just more, more pressure, and you have to do everything without any tiny slip-up if you're going to try and run the entire thing. Now, our final request that we're going to be looking at today, our final commonly suggested thing, is to run a Survive the Hunt in the northern half of the map. Now, we only ever run it in the city. The main reason being is that, well, it's densely populated. There's lots of roads, there's lots of alleyways, there's buildings you can hide around in, and you generally get better car chases. If you go to the northern half of the map, generally speaking, if you get seen, you're going to be in a chase for the rest of the time. Getting away is damn near impossible. However, I don't think it's ever been shown in a video, so we were going to have a go with trying to well, survive the hunt in the top part of the map. Basically, we were using the top half from kind of Sandy Shores upwards. So I worked my way up towards Polito Bay. I actually found a Rapid GT, which is a pretty damn nice car, pretty good car, to be driving around on on this one. They're just sort of going to cruise the roads. I don't actually know if the Rapids tend to make their way through Polito Bay. See, I don't, <laughs> I don't know too much about the spawn setup here in the... I, got, I know this bit of the map, but I don't tend to go up here very often. So I don't know the spawn set. The good news is, nobody else does either. So, if the Rapid GT is out of place around here, no one's going to know. No one's going to know well enough. So there is a little bit of, I say fairness, a little bit of evenness between everything. But you can see here, the difficulty that I would have in a, in a chase situation is certainly with a blimp, with a chopper, with something up in the sky. There's no building, there's no cover, you can't dive underneath anywhere. Your only real bet is to jump out of the car and try and shoot them down almost. Unless you get very, very, very lucky. There's also, you know, sort of turnings and whatnot. Everywhere's got quite good line of sights because everything is that little bit more spread out on here. But, I mean, the hope was we might be able to wander around a little bit and not have them find me. It is perhaps a slightly larger area. There is kind of more wilderness that you could go to uh, if and and when needed. Now, the Rapid is not going to be the car for sort of wilderness exploring, but it's one of those that could be... Uh, could be a possibility. So we're driving around here. We'd seen a couple of hunters, nothing really all that crazy was going on. Uh, for those, I say for those that will never be say yes, the window's smashed. No, the damage doesn't sink on everybody's screens. We've tested it, it doesn't. So the fact that a car drives past, <laughs> that damage is, the, the window, sorry, is, is probably clean on someone's screen. Now, as I am driving along here, I'd say minding my own business, uh, a couple of hunters are behind me and they fill me with dread. They actually come up and have a good investigate of the car. They have a look. They don't really... I mean, we bump into it. I try to act like an AI in all of that. I figure if I bump into the car a little bit, uh, it might be more AI-esque. The thing is, now now my car does have damage, and it probably will be synced because, well, they saw it. Also, a red Rapid GT is not exactly an in, you know, I say incognito. It's not exactly a discreet car, so I figure, right, there's a 9F here. I'm going to park up quickly with this. Uh, we're going to leave the, I guess, now burnt car... Because there isn't that many Rapids. I haven't seen another Rapid GT around at the moment. Especially not a red one. So we leave the burnt car. I actually managed to set off the alarm of the 9F, which really helped me when I opened the door <laughs> of the Rapid. So I was like, fine, okay, we're going to leave, the, leave that car. Let the alarm go. We're going to have just a little wait uh, before I go and nick that car. I also had to check to make sure as something shot past. It looked like a monster drone. I don't even know what it was. Uh, the problem <laughs> that came for me is the car that had checked it earlier, sure enough, remembered it. They saw it parked up. They reversed back to have a look. Now, I took my opportunity to ambush them. However, I say it may not have been the cleverest idea. I, 
I got I had to drop on them, but uh, that also does give a little bit of a uh, issue in that now they know something's up, and the the hunter there had had mentioned uh, they'd seen or mentioned that they they were stopping to check the red car because they'd already seen it and they were curious about it and so on, and this gave me a real big problem because I was now on foot with very limited options. My plan had been to sit on the rooftop, and I could see from up here that there was stuff going around. There were cars, there were hunter cars now starting to head around this area. Uh, they had already suspected that I had been up in Polito Bay anyway, because they'd found the Formula 1, so I stopped the petrol station on the way into Polito Bay I'd stopped at to swap cars. I should have probably hit the Formula 1 car around the back of it, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, and I just kind of just abandoned it when I grabbed a new car, and they'd figured that sort of following direction of travel that I would probably headed towards Polito Bay anyway Why they had cars searching it. It's not a guarantee I could have travelled anywhere, but, you know, you're kind of working with whatever you can get. When you're in a much more confined area, um, it, isn't as, it isn't as easy. And by now, you know, they'd found the car that we'd... They'd found exactly where we'd shot uh, the Hunter. They were now starting to search this area, and I didn't know how to get out of this one. My hope had been if I sat on the roof for long enough they would think I had left. I can see it, there's a lifeguard truck in the distance wandering around, there's people uh, driving about, there was a, a black pickup truck that I'd seen sort of <laughs> going around, it's like, well, what do I do? I'd hoped, being on the roof, that they weren't necessarily going to be looking up, there's the lifeguard truck, there's the there's the pickup truck, there's something else uh, down there as well, there's a fusillade or whatever, uh, I wondered whether perhaps trying to take some of them out from the rooftop might be a good idea, uh, I, I wasn't completely sure, uh, you know, we're just kind of having a little little look around. They're not not really likely to see uh, unless you're specifically looking. Uh, the problem is they were looking in this area, and this was not exactly the most difficult roof to access. So <laughs> that was going to be the the problem uh, for me. And well, so I see the lifeguard thing uh, pull up. I thought I'd see if I could take some pot shots, maybe get lucky. Uh, with shoot or maybe think maybe distract them and get them to think that I was somewhere else where I wasn't unfortunately too many were now heading up to I say up to this roof I think they were just checking roofs and it happened to be one that I was on I killed somebody well, I killed two technically hunters in that one but uh, I just got stuck on a roof I should I should have gone on the roof maybe not but it's the inevitable lack of options almost that you get uh, when when stuck up there so we tried it again things hadn't really gone particularly well I learned a couple of things that I probably shouldn't have done, shall we say, in in that one. The first being, make sure I, whenever I abandoned my car, because the hunters are going to come out here and there's kind of only two ways I can go. I either go, well, I guess three technically-ish. I either go up to Polito Bay the way that I did. I either go through or up towards Grapeseed, kind of around the bottom of Chiliad along the dirt road, or I can go to Sandy Shore. That's basically the three options that I have uh, available, if you will. So they're now going to check that, so they're going to send cars off in all the different directions and see if they spot, in this case, a different Formula 1 car. If they find a Formula 1 car, they probably know which way I am heading in. Uh, so, yeah, first lesson I learned was to abandon the car in a better place, uh, which I did. They never found the Formula 1 car. Uh, second thing, I got a uh, Stratum, which is a fairly good choice of car, uh, really. Now, one thing I did learn, the AI are a bit funky. The AI around these areas, I mean, the AI in general are a little bit weird, but the AI in these particular areas were also quite, uh, quite strange, shall we say. They did some odd things. They occasionally sort of like just pulled across in front of you to cause trouble. Now, there were hunter vehicles around the place. Uh, however, tension-wise, this was also much less so than inside the city. It's a much bigger, much more spread out area. This is the sort of dumb nonsense that they were getting up to, the AI cars. I don't know why. No, <laughs> no idea what it was doing. That is an AI vehicle. That is not a player car. That is not a hunter. That's just an AI that's forgotten how to corner, and I have to kind of navigate my way around it. And again, it's just kind of try my best to blend in with that one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'd been going about 10, 15 minutes at this point, and I'd been mostly on a dirt road. I'd taken one of the dirt the paths, and I hadn't really seen anything uh, at all that was going on, which isn't as good in terms of making something interesting, uh, because you just didn't see the hunters. They didn't head down the particular the one dirt path that I happened to be on, uh, and that meant I just kind of drove around with the stratum occasionally getting confused by the AIs uh, doing some funky things, so we were just, uh, you know, it's it's follow follow the rules. However, things would get uh, rather rather more hectic as I headed back towards Polito Bay. Um, 
Okay, the scratches on the back of my car aren't that bad. You'd have to be really studying it. Because it's a black car, they are only minor scratches. That must be... I would presume a player taking that line is just searching through this list of this load of cars. Uh, and that's fine. We can blend in. We can... We can sneak around. Is that one of them with a... Yes, it is one of them with a military truck. <laughs> oh, God, there's another one of them with a military truck as well behind us. I've just seen another barracks. Fantastic. Okay, well, we are going to have to... Uh, oh, we've got to try and merge now. Thank you, Audi. What on earth has gone on here? <laughs> That's really not helping me with my goal of blending in with traffic here. Um, this has just put me in a really bad position. There's also no other stratums spawning, which isn't great, and we've found the military convoy. I don't want to be with the military. This I can't turn off of here. We've just got to drive along the motorway now. That's all we have to do is just drive along the motorway. We can't turn off of this and hope. Come on, AIs. Some AIs come and get involved, please. Please, AIs. I'm trying to judge my speed on if the AIs are catching me or not. Um, and the fact that they are suggests we should probably be speeding up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> not too much, though. Not get too far away. Just kind of match the speed they want to be doing. Yeah, the AIs do drive a bit manic around here. Uh, oh. God. <laughs> It's all got a quite... I thought this was the lane we had to be in as well. Apparently not. This is complete carnage, and I don't really know how to deal with it. Um, we're going to... <laughs> I think that's an AI. Is that... Please let that be an AI. Oh, I don't know what to do here. We're just going to, like, park up behind everybody. Um, <laughs> what the hell do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, they're trying to make a baby wrangler, I think. I mean, how do you get, like, a military jeep? Is that how that one works? Is that how military jeeps are born? We shouldn't be, we, we shouldn't be watching this. God damn it. Uh, this is not, this is not fail race approved. I'm going to look back this way. It's fine. We've made a massive traffic jam. <laughs> God damn it. No, don't abandon your car. That's not good. That's not good at all. They're going for the cavalcade. I'm glad they didn't go for my stratum. Oh, they are trying to go for the stratum. Well, that's gone unfortunate for me. Uh, <laughs> that's really gone unfortunately for me. In that we are in the midst of all of this. And there is literally nothing that I can do here. Um, my hope is going to have to be... That we can maybe sneak into a car in all of this chaos and they're not going to know which one I'm in. Uh, <laughs> that is the hope. This is a really, really brave strategy here. If it works, it could be absolutely glorious. Uh, Lester, buddy, I really need you. I really need you, Lau, um, if at all possible. Oh, the police are going to screw me here. Uh, I think... Hmm. Leave it with me. Okay. Okay. If this has worked, it will be the greatest getaway I've ever done. Annoyingly, the truck is sat behind. I don't think the truck knows where I've gone in that mess. I think there was so much chaos that uh, they don't know. I think maybe they do. Hmm. <laughs> I think that is a person in the Oracle I thought was an AI that was just freaked out and running. Hmm. Yeah. That's not great. Oh, it was nearly a fantastically little sneaky getaway. Unfortunately, just not quite good enough. Now, if I'm going to actually make it out of here... Uh, there is going to have to be a few things that are going to have to happen. First of all, if I can get away quickly, that would probably be the most important, the most helpful, which I don't think we're going to do because there are too many cars. That is nearly very, very sneaky. Uh, the cavalcade is not great, I'll be honest, for this kind of a thing. Um, the cavalcade is not really my preferred vehicle for trying to run away. We're going to do the Horizon 4 tactic. I'm going to point the car at a mountain. My hope is, is that they might roll 
That is honestly my best bet, is that they roll and I don't. Uh, it's a lot of luck-based going on here. Uh, which I know me hoping for someone else rolling and not me is unusual, to say the least. No, that's not working. Although one of them has fallen out of their car. That's one less person to have to deal with. Ooh! Nope. Well, we've rolled a lot. Oh, thank you! You've actually punted me the right direction. There's so many of them already over here. That's just not what I needed. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh, no, wait. We're actually going to land that really nicely. Oh, not so much for the cars behind. Thing is, I'm super broken already in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is super tough. This is the difficulty, is that especially... I mean, that contender is a little bit... I'm not going to lie, a little bit strong. Uh, for the, <laughs> Considering I can't actually get something better off the road, basically. Um, however... Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no hope for this now. It was a fun idea. I should maybe have stuck with the roads. That might have given me a better chance. Uh, the only hope I've got here is that they're actually blocking me in from someone being able to shoot by virtue of so many vehicles are around. Uh, eventually, they are just going to pin my car here, uh, which is the problem part. Uh, oh, I'm going to get shot if I don't run them over. Uh, there, there we go. Just too many of them. Maybe I shouldn't have gone off-road, but I think they can just get to me too quickly. Um, unfortunately, oh, we almost got a really cool getaway. Not quite. Not, not quite that one. So, ultimately, the experiments kind of worked. I say, well, they, they kind of went the way that... That I expected. Um, the the truck did get spotted relatively quickly, which was a little bit of a shame. Uh, in in that one, I think you know you could probably survive for quite a long time. Eventually, though, again, this is that case of one mistake is going to give you away, and you literally can't get away from that one. On foot, not being able to cross the road is an absolute killer. Uh, starting with you know trying to run the entire time. Not only does it lose some of the tension, but you have to be perfect. You have to be perfect for 50 minutes driving through the city. And even if you are perfect, an AI could do something weird and screw your car up entirely for you. It's unlikely. It's unlikely to ever really be feasible. As far as the northern half of the map goes, there was a little more promise. Certainly in the second one that we did, there's a little more promise to what happened to, to the events that went on. It was quite interesting. It was quite exciting. But it's always going to come across to the same things. You're likely to be stuck not seeing much for quite a long time as the area is bigger and more sparsely populated. And if you do get seen, you're in trouble. Okay, I didn't have a best car for that one. Had I been in a rapid GT and had to run, I would say it would be going off road. I maybe could have survived, but I'm struggling to lose aircraft inside the city where there are buildings and tunnels and subways and all of that sort of thing that I could go to. In Polito Bay? Not a chance. Now, we actually didn't allow aircraft because it was going to be too easy in there, but... Just the line of sight for a car in all of that is so great. There's no buildings really to hide behind for most of that area. Maybe an off-road vehicle, you throw it into the tr trees around by the dangerous road area, that river part. Maybe you could cause some trouble, but yeah, simply just trying to get away, any chance of getting away. And the cavalcade isn't terrible, and I mean, I managed to survive with a bloody Hummer for a while, and that's probably slower than the cavalcade. So yeah, ultimately, while it'd be fun for the north part of the map to work... It kind of doesn't. It kind of doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, but there we go. Those are how. Those are ways how not to survive the hunt. That is why we don't do these various things. Or sort of on foot is a last-minute panic. Crap! I've got to try and not get murdered here. Sort of a thing. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit different video. Thank you all very much for watching. We will be back to a normal survive the hunt for the first of the uh, next month. Until next time, though, a goodbye.